Good morning, business heroes. It is about 5.45 and 27 degrees, if my phone is to be believed. I'm gonna go for a little walk. <laughs> I, uh, I've really been working to have a good morning routine. And typically I get up and I listen to some audio and then I play some Minecraft because it's just something easy and passive I can do. But with my ADD, it keeps me occupied so I can like, that part of my brain that gets like super distracted is busy building things, but it doesn't take any like active, you know, processing. So what I can do is I can easily listen to stuff. And so what I'll do is I'll listen to the Bible for a little bit, you know, about a half hour, and then I'll switch over and listen to an audiobook. I'm losing the light. Um, hold on, let's get back up to some light. All right, we got another street light here. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing, listen to audiobook. Um, and then after about, you know, 45 minutes or so of that, then I'll jump over to um, the rest of my morning routine, which is I go down to the little basement office and um, I have a list of things. Snowplows are out. I have a list of things I do and maybe I can show that in another video, but that's not for today. Uh, but today, yeah, I, I just kind of felt like, you know, I don't, I didn't want to sit down and play Minecraft and I didn't want to jump right into my stuff yet. So I was like, let's go for a walk. I looked outside. It was fresh snow last night. So the roads are covered. Plows haven't been through yet. Looks like the buses have been through and that's about it. So I was like, yeah, let's go for a walk from nice fresh. It's actually snowing right now. If you, I don't know if you can tell it on the video, but it is snowing. And I was like, let's. Let's go instead of playing Minecraft. Let's go for a little bit of a walk. And sorry, I sound a little out of breath. Um, I'm not walking that fast. It's just really cold. <laughs> I think my body's like trying to keep myself warm. So I was like, yeah, let's go for a little walk. Let's kill two birds with one stone because one of my things on my on my list is to work out or to exercise, I should say. I don't think walking's technically working out, but it does fall into the category of exercise. So I'm like, cool, two birds with one stone. I'll go get my um daily bible uh listening and my audiobook listening done and get a little bit of exercise and get to just kind of clear my head and be out in this beautiful nature that all of you guys from northern um, upstate new york hate but i love just go do it get into this so we're talking about customer avatar right and it's important for a lot of reasons and I'm not gonna go into all those maybe later but right now I want to talk to you a little bit about any some examples I'm gonna tell you what mine is that I came up with uh, few, uh, last week and how I'm kind of shifting some of the content a little bit just to really focus on that better and then maybe I'll tell you a bit about how the the first iteration of business heroes Oh, why it didn't go so well because I didn't have a customer avatar. The idea of a customer avatar is you, you've got to know that John or Jane, you know exactly how they are. Yesterday, yeah, yesterday, we talked about with the audio versus uh, video about how you, you really can't answer that for yourself, your business, until you know who your customer is and what they're, you're trying to do, right? So here's the whole, the whole idea is um, you, you basically figure out and you, you Put, you personify your customer. So instead of saying like, oh, entrepreneurs. Okay, right, so that this was the problem with business here the first time, is I never took the time to figure out my customer avatar, so I was all over the map with everything. I was putting on email course, and I was doing this, and I was doing this, and it was all over, I was trying to hit all entrepreneurs because I thought entrepreneurship was cool, and I, I didn't have that focus, right? And, and so it's like, what what is that focus gonna be? And I, so, yeah, so, <laughs> so, uh, let's just, I'm just gonna read mine without any further ado. So here's what I came up with. 
Actually, there's a little more ado. When I relaunched it this time, I knew going into it that I was good. That was something I was going to have to do differently if I wanted to be uh, more successful this time and really get business heroes off the ground. I can't just be like, oh, entrepreneurs. And even doing the Entrepreneurs Roundtable um, virtual summit, I was struggling a little bit because it's like, mm, I'm kind of getting a little bit back into that kind of hazy territory where elite, but and then I, I was able to focus a little bit. When I first started business heroes, I thought I was gonna focus a little more on like brick and mortar. Hey, that went not a business. Hey, I saw your sign. So you're open? That's right. What do you do? What do you need? Milk? We have milk. Basically business people who need to get, like have an established business and need to get online. So if you look back to the first, you know, two weeks of my content, um, a lot of that was about like, oh, how to, you know, send your better emails and how to do and that kind of stuff and when i really was thinking about it and was going through it i was like no i really need to define this and it needs to be an audience that really like like lights me on fire it just gets me like i'm super passionate about them um i'm super passionate to help them i'm super passionate to talk to them i'm gonna start a pod you know starting the podcast it needs to be a group of people i'm i'm genuinely interested talking to so i'm like oh man it's saturday and i've got three three podcast interviews scheduled and Oh, it's so, it's so draining. Like I wanted to be like, yeah, man, it's Saturday. I'm so excited. I, I've got three calls lined up today. I can't wait to talk to these guys and girls. It's so, I just can't wait to hear more about their story. All right. So with that, this is what I, I settled on. And I really looked at, so first I made a pie chart of like, what kind of content do I want to produce? Right? So I started this because, you know, of the, the Russell Brunson 365 uh, content challenge, which, you know, again, I've talked about and I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to figure it out. Now, this isn't my first time doing stuff. I've had a show where I got up and in front of like a green screen and I did uh, like motivational type things and, uh, and whatnot and encouraging um, and pushing forward and giving tips and tactics. I've done vlogs before. Um, I've done a vlog several times actually over the period of like three or so years. So I've like, I've played around with it, but I'm like, what do I want the show to look like? What do I want the medium to be? You know, and in the beginning I was calling it the vlog, but you notice I've changed it from the vlog to the show. Cause I'm like, look, I want a little more variety. Like I do sometimes want to sit down in front of my desk and talk to you guys. And sometimes I want to get out and go and vlog something. But then at the same time, right now, there's not a lot happening. Like it's hard to vlog something. Like even go look at all the vloggers. Like they're barely posting because with the shutdown, what are you gonna vlog? Oh, when I go to Costco, I love it for all the free samples. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted a little more variety. So I changed it after I created this. Um, so I, I, I created this pie chart. I was like, what do I wanna talk about? What is my, con how do I wanna break it down? I came up with four different categories and I said, oh, okay. So I really shouldn't call it a vlog anymore because I've got a variety of stuff. So I'm gonna change it from the vlog to the show. Show. Cause I still like the way it said like the vlog, you know, welcome to the vlog. I'm like, okay, this can be the same thing. It's like the show. Show. Welcome to the show. Show. Like, so it's similar. Okay, first off, I wanted to add a podcast. So the first category is business heroes interviews. Now, whether I keep it that name or if I change it, or whatever, we'll see. I kind of have to keep it because my wife made me a mug that says business heroes. Yeah, so I think I'm stuck with it. Just kidding. And so like, that's one thing, right? So I, I, I set a time aside. I'm like, look, I'm going to start setting Saturdays aside to schedule um, calls with with people to be able to, and I'm trying not to say the actual name because I haven't got into it yet, but to be able to schedule calls for, for the podcast so I can put out once a week, I can put out one of those episodes. So on this channel, once a week, it's gonna be, you know, Wednesdays are supposed to be, I haven't done any yet, are supposed to be um, these business hero interviews. So I, I need to do that, I need to put some action to that, right? So then I was like, look, video tutorials. And I was like, look, I wasn't doing that. I was just doing all like business tips and stuff. And I was like, well, I, I do want to do so. Like I did one, a couple episodes I was in the studio. And then that one day I did that little behind the scenes. And I was like, I want to do video tutorials. Like I have a team I'm working with and, and building a team right now. And so I'm doing a lot of this teaching and training, but I'm like, it's fun and I want to do it. And there's a lot of things I'm learning. I was like, I put this stuff out and help others who are going through it. Like, you know, I, the amount of videos I'm producing or am I now having a team help, pr help produce? And, you know, we got several live stream shows we're doing a week and it's a lot. I'm like, I want to, I want to then take what I'm learning and, and share that. So I'm like, I want some video tutorials. And I'm like, well, Peter McKinnon did two minute Tuesdays. Guess what day it is. I like that idea. I like it like rhyming and all that kind of stuff. I was like, but I'm not gonna ever do a tutorial in two minutes neither has he so rather than just calling it two minute tuesdays i'm gonna call it tutorial tuesdays 
And, and then this morning, because yesterday's video wasn't actually a tutorial, I ended up talking about video versus audio. And so I was like, well, you know what? Sometimes I'll just, if I want to do that, I'll just call it Tech Tuesdays instead of Tutorial Tuesdays. And I can talk about like a cool new piece of tech or something that you should look at or, or whatever. And it's all going to fit in with my, my perfect customer avatar, right? Um, another thing is I have, and I know that this is going to push a lot of people away, but I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't care. This is like, I want to be able to track the perfect customer, not customer really at this point, more of um, audience, I guess is a better way to look at it. So one category is like, I want to have like devotionals and, and like spiritual guidance type stuff. Like I'm a pastor, like that's kind of my day job, even though most of my day job, I've kind of, I've switched. I'm not so, I spend a lot less of my time actually pastoring now because I'm an associate pastor and I run our media stuff. Um, I do spend most of my time, but I still have that team. I actually have two teams. There's stuff there I want to talk about, right? There's things like I'm, I'm, I'm listening to a book right now that I want to discuss and go through. In fact, these then to the next category, I'm like, look, these are similar, but the, the last category is like mindset and coaching type stuff. I feel like God created me in a way where amongst some of my other, you know, I'm creative and this kind of stuff. But I also enjoy like the fellowship of people, but I, I enjoy conversations. I, I'm not afraid of opposing ideas. I like researching stuff and studying stuff. I like taking things that like, hey, I've heard this my entire life, but how does it actually work? How does it actually play out? And trying to run with that and trying to figure that out and helping others and right. So I'm like, look, and I've been spending a ton of time and even money right, like recently going through courses and challenges and books about mindset and how to, how to take like my mental threshold to take that to the next level so I can grow more. And so I'm like, look, I wanna incorporate that. And those are kind of intertwined, but they're also can kind of be separate. And so I'm like, these are like the four categories of like content I wanna create. And who I have as my customer uh, target or perfect customer basically is, now I didn't name them like, a lot of them are like, oh, you should name them and give them a name. Uh, Russell Brunson even went through the point of like cutting out pictures of what they look like. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I'm not there yet. But I basically come up with um, for my target customer is the creative entrepreneur looking for more in business, family, friends uh, and friends who feels out of balance and like something is missing in life. Life is good and they should be grateful, but they can't shake the feeling that there is something more just uh, beyond the horizon, and if they could just dis, uh, displace the shroud of mist, they would see it and exponentially improve the quality of all facets of life. That's pretty specific, right? So, and you can see how that those four content categories builds right into that, right? So the creative entrepreneur. I'm like, look, before I was an entrepreneur, like. I was an artist, right? I wanted to have a comic book company and then I wanted to have a film production company and I, I love it and I'm getting more into it. Now with my, with my position since the whole shutdown, I've gotten way back into the film production stuff uh, more so than I have been in a long time. That was my first actual church position was actually the media director. I did that for years at our church. And so for the first time since then, and then I also worked for the county doing uh, media production and I had a little studio and I did all their media production for the first time in a long time, I'm getting back into that and I, and I love it. And I'm starting to get back into 3D, which is like, it's like my Mount Kilimanjaro that like I keep trying to, or Mount Everest or whatever, I keep trying to hit that summit. And each time I get a little further, but I've never quite made it there all the way. And now I'm having opportunities with like building out virtual sets and, and digital props and, and effects and stuff and some of the stuff we're doing. And I'm like, this is awesome. And so like, I, I don't, I don't want to cut that part off. I'm like, I'm, I'm a creative entrepreneur. So I want to do, I want to produce content for others like me. And then I have in there, like, you know, they feel like there's something missing and they want more, you know, because that's something that both on the entrepreneur side and the artist side, where you can feel, you know, like the, the misunderstood artist and you, you know, like depression and stuff like that runs really high and like self, self doubt. And, and, you know, does anyone even care? Is this even worth it? I should just quit. No one, you know, like I'm never going to make it as an artist. Those kind of things, those same things actually are, a lot in the entrepreneurial world, which it isn't as apparent because you typically think of an entrepreneur as like outgoing and, and like you think of like Gary Vee and, or like, um, all these people right in there, very like gregarious even. And you're like, Oh, there's no way. Tony Robbins, Peter, I've seen thousands of people over the years and helped every single one of them. 
I'm not going to let you be my first failure. But that's not the typical entrepreneur. A lot of them do deal with, with self-doubt and with struggles and like, am I worth it? Should I just quit? You know, all these things, right? Should I just go back and get a job? So I feel like that marries together really well with like the, the mindset and the coaching and that kind of stuff. And then I even, you know, as being a believer, I feel like, okay, then the spiritual side of it as well, because I feel like that's really the answer. There's only so far you can go with like, positive mindset and, and dealing with your limitations and stuff like that without at the end of the day, you know, if you're separated from Christ, there's still an issue there. You're still always going to be trying to fill that void with something. So I feel like those all go together, right? And this all really just works. And then the, the interviews, just because again, these are my people, artists who are trying to monetize their art. That is like who I want to help. So that's why I said, Look, I'm not trying to, like, I'm doing it backwards from the way I, I tried it the first time where I'm like, look, let me try to go get a customer, then I'll build a business around that. No, wait, I was trying to, like, build it and then shoehorn it. I was, I was like, look, I'm going to create this product, and then I'm going to go and try to, like, figure out how to get it to fit, you know, in everyone. Now I'm doing it the opposite, where I'm like, look, I want to create the content that I think is valuable and is going to help to the customer that I feel like I connect with, that my people, it's my tribe I can build around, and then I'll, I'll monetize around that and build a business around that. And hey, guess what? That's exactly what they're looking to do. They already are an artist. Like, I'm not going to teach them to paint better. I'm not going to teach them to do all the new stuff. I mean, maybe if they're in video and they, they can learn some of that kind of stuff. But like, overall, I'm not trying to help them with their, their craft. I'm trying to help them craft a business around their craft. So I'm, I'm trying to help those who are like, look, I make all this. Like, I can think of a friend of mine and I won't say her name because I don't have permission but to, to talk about her yet. But I did message her. I'm trying to get her on as one of the early um, guests. And she does. She's always been crafty. Her and even my wife back in the day, you know, they they made props and they made puppets for us and she did cake stuff and she had a cake business for a long time. And now she's got like a full studio and she does all kinds of stuff, like makes mugs and shirts and decorate like all oh, she's crafty basically and she sells this stuff right and she puts it online and she sells and she like struggles with her social media and she's like i don't like doing it it takes up so much time and i'm like look yeah this that's like my jam that's the part i really love like that i can't come and tell you how to be better at making ceramic mugs uh or any of the other cool decorative stuff you do but i can help you build a business around that and then that way you can you know grow that way and be able to do more of the things you want to do. If you're a musician, I can't help you play better because I'm not a musician, but I can help you build and monetize around that. I can help you build your following and get your stuff out there and then start, you know, come up with a product to be able to sell. So that way you now can focus, you can buy a better guitar or drum set, whatever. So I think you get the idea, right? Like the idea of like, these are my people I'm going to build around that. I feel like all this content perfectly funnels into that for exactly what they need and is going to help. And then again, the business will be around that. So as I create products around that content and that tribe, then now it's not, I'm trying to sell anything. Now it's like, Oh yeah. It, when I launch like a coaching program, when I, when I launch some sort of product, that's like, yeah, this is a perfect fit. I already listen to all this stuff. I watch his videos, listen to podcasts. I love the guy, hopefully. <laughs> and it's like, and this is exactly what I need. This, this course on how to do X, Y, Z. I'm struggling to do X, Y, Z. So yeah, I'm gonna buy it. And then it makes like a perfect, perfect harmony. <laughs> it's practically perfect in every way, right? So that's all I've got for that, uh, for this portion. 